I want to be very clear. We do not expect harmful levels of radiation to reach the West Coast, Hawaii, Alaska, or U.S. territories in the Pacific. That is the judgment of our Nuclear Regulatory Commission and many other experts. Furthermore, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and public health experts do not recommend that people in the United States take precautionary measures beyond staying informed. And going forward, we will continue to keep the American people fully updated, because I believe that you must know what I know as president. According to the Institute for New Energy, as of 1997, the U.S. Patent Office has classified over 3,000 patent devices or applications under the secrecy order, Title 35, U.S. Code, 1952, Sections 181 through 188, end quote. The Federation of American Scientists revealed that by the end of fiscal year 2010, this number had ballooned to 5,135 inventions and included, quote, review and possible restriction, end quote, on any solar cell with greater than 20% efficiency or any power system that is more than 70 to 80% efficient at converting energy. According to Dr. O'Leary, some researchers are bought off and their discoveries put on a shelf. Others are threatened into submission, while others die under strange circumstances. I just read to you a passage from David Wilcox's book titled The Source Field Investigations. And whatever you think of David Wilcox, put that to the side, because if someone comes to me and tells me there's a werewolf, that they are a werewolf, but offers me credible information, I will consider it. Okay? It doesn't matter who you are, your personality and necessarily your background. I weigh the information itself, and I say that because there's a lot of controversy surrounding David Wilcox, but don't let that controversy turn you off to the fact that the Federation of Scientists and, and the Federation of American Scientists and the Institute for New Energy have arrived at some of these figures in regards to patent suppression. <clears throat> and that is the first frame of my uh, frames we're going to look at today in regards to Plumegate, which is the largest conspiracy and cover-up provable to date that I'm aware of multiple agencies, FEMA, DHS, Department of Energy, NRC, you said the White House involved, multiple agencies in covering up what? The radioactive plume and fallout from Fukushima disaster. And still to this day, there's an ongoing blackout, and there's a lag time on information, if you're even fortunate enough to get information at all. Some of it is suppressed, and we may never know. Okay, second frame. And you can follow this on my blog talk post today. I have a link to everything we're going to look at today. You can follow me on these links and look at these screen captures as we go through this. I will try to be uh, speedy and not have too much commentary so we can cover some ground. This is an uh, internal email from David Liu. This is accessible through the NRC Freedom of Information. And you can get that online. The NRC website has a section thousands and thousands of pages. Get in there, get involved, and write about it. Okay, this is from David Liu, and this is going out to a number of people. But the, the point of this email and why I screen captured and presenting it today, as you can see at the bottom, says FEMA has stood down and operating under normal weekend staffing. It also says NRC is mining its role in the White House to carry the messages. NRC has four objectives. Continued monitoring to the situation so we can, given limited information, Outreach to IAEA and proposing IAE as a point of contact for Japan, not a good thing. They're very, very corrupt. And IAEA says nuclear power is emission-free and clean energy. Now we can't trust them, can we? If they're going to lie to us about that, they're going to lie to us about a whole lot of things. Also says further development of NRC questions and answers. Again, we know a lot about the Q&A, talking points, press releases, two amounts uh, two sections of information, one for the government and the powers that shouldn't be, and then the small limited amount that sheds a very positive light on everything that goes to the American public. Interaction with DHS and federal agencies, including plume, plot, possible exposure models, and monitoring on the West Coast. We'll look at a frame near the end of this presentation where you will see that indeed they discuss, we know all about Chernobyl, and they show uh, uh, samples from Chernobyl, samples from Three Mile Island, and they're using that to look at Fukushima and be able to plot in these plume maps and, and, and come to a conclusion of how much we're going to get blasted with. Of course, we're not told the truthful amounts that we're hit with. 
We'll look at a frame that shows the RADnet monitors. EPA has rigged the RADnet monitors, right? This, the radiation was so severe, they couldn't be honest with the American public. Okay, I'll read from the second, uh, third frame. This is directly from the Freedom of Information documents pertaining to Fukushima. Mike, Rob, this is inaudible. I have a question for you. This request for doses in California projected with, I guess, worst case assumptions. Is that correct, Mr. Lewis? I believe the doses that we saw from DITRA, those, those guys do modeling, DITRA, represented a source term of 100% of the inaudible. Mike, okay, and we're, is this information being considered for releasing publicly like we do with the press release? Mr. Lewis, which information are you speaking about? Mike, I'm talking about those projected dose models, the models that you, the ones that you are doing and coordinating with other agencies. Is there some thought about releasing that publicly? Mr. Lewis, we have not had that discussion at this time. Mike, and don't take that as a suggestion to inaudible. I'm just curious as to how we came, think how we came about this. Mr. Dorman, Mike, this is Dan. No, no. We're not planning any press release with this information. This was a projection that we were requested to run. Separate from our being requested to run that, we got this Department of Energy briefing package that had this other DITRA run in it. Remember, DITRA does the plume model. And we're not, I don't know what prompted theirs or all of the assumptions that went into theirs, but it obviously caught our attention. And we are looking to get what we think would be a more realistic projections. Other questions? Ms. Howe. Dan, just one comment. And Rob, this is Linda Howe in Region 4. Rob, I can talk with you offline about some background information for California. The DITRA and DOE runs for California may have been prompted by queries from the state because the state has been conducting interagency conference calls, and DOE, EPA, HHS has been part of those calls. Our regional state liaison officer is also monitoring that but there is some background that is politically sensitive that I can share with you offline. Again, I remind you, this happened on 311, and this was the year that Obama would be his run up to election in his second term. There was major blackout, major suppression. The mainstream media helped, the alternative media helped, Alex Jones helped Obama. All of them covered for Obama to get him reelected. When this happened on his watch, and I put it to you, only a number of possibilities with Obama. If he doesn't know anything about what really happened, well, he's lied to and conspired to by all these agencies around him. That's horrible. That's, what, that's like what Egypt is, the president of Egypt. He only knows what they tell him in his circle around him. Okay? That's not good. Okay, number two, he's just a total buffoon, and he has no clue. Just a total, absolute buffoon. That ain't good if the guy's out oblivious to the realities of a nuclear meltdown. We need a better president, don't we? Too late for that now, I suppose. And number three is totally in all that knows everything he's doing. Those are the logical possibilities that I have been able to come up with. Next frame. We're looking at a screen capture from the FOIA documents pertaining to Fukushima. They are free and available to the public. You can look at on the NRC website. This is from Jack of Eugene to a number of people. Again, this is in regards to the situation report and the box red section. I will read it to you. Now we're getting calls from ordinary citizens from California and Oregon wanting to know if they need to evacuate. The liaison team was ready to, quote, unquote, deploy DOE assets to monitor the plume. Then somebody realized that maybe HLF and EPA should take the lead. Okay, and again, I'm going to show you a frame from a screen capture from an article about the RADnet monitors were rigged. The uh, radiation levels were raised in the food and in the human tolerance levels, right? This is pure Orwellian fascism, brave new world. Where they're rewriting the history and the game and the rules and the laws of nature as they go along. Isn't that wonderful, ladies and gentlemen? That's what our tax dollars are paying for. Okay, next screen capture. <clears throat> if you have not received KI, that is potassium iodine, that is what protects your thyroid from radioactive iodine. Now, no, it doesn't guard you from cesium and all these other multitude of other radioactive substances that are released in a criticality. However, you know, it's like I say, if you're going to throw me into a pit with five different snakes, at least give me an antidote to one of the snakes. I'm not going to complain about it. I'm not going to complain about it. Better one than none, okay? And, and clearly in these documents you see, and I've got a whole file called KI, where they're not only trying to discourage everyone else from thinking we need it, but that's the general thrust of the establishment and the powers that shouldn't be, but in the documents, boy, they're all worried about getting it before they go over there, sending it to the, to the Japanese, and at the same time, they're telling reporters over here, now nah, you don't really need it, and it's not that big a deal, it's not going to help you out anyway. But if they go over there, they sure says, pick up your KI. If you haven't received it, pick it up on your way over there. Taking care of their own, huh? 
next frame. Multi-day trending of all available dose rate information shows slightly declining levels. Indications of trace but detectable amounts of iodine-131 are being reported to some nuclear plants in the United States. Jenna, Nine Mile, Palo Verde, Solomon, Diablo Canyon, Columbia, Millstone. Protective Measures team is reviewing data sets. Industry has agreed to collect the data and provide to NRC for distribution within, with the federal government. Anticipate EPA lead. Well, we all know about the EPA. They're overseeing pretty much a lot of this conspiracy and cover-up. It's all proven in the documents. I'm reading it to you now. Notice, please take note that they do these rooftop grabs for iodine-131, a relatively short half-life. We're looking about eight days. If not, they'll look at cesium, but they don't want to look at any of the long-term half-lives. There's no plutonium. There's no uranium. No one's testing for that unless it's some private or some non-establishment entity that is doing it. And then there's a major blackout. Okay, they will hack your system. They will shut your phone down. This is real as I've been experiencing myself as I began to come out of my shell and say, hey, I'm going to get active. I'm going to speak out. I don't care what happens to me. These things are real. Next frame. NRC met with representatives from the National Emergency Management Association, NEMA, kind of like FEMA, but now there's a NEMA for the whole globe. Isn't that wonderful? We're globalized now. Transnational corporations rule the world. The USA is no more. Regarding ongoing business, the state emergency directors uniformly express the desire for a federal official to serve as the focus for USG, the U.S. government, messaging on the potential health effects to U.S. states and territories. Make no mistake, ladies and gentlemen, within the FOIA documents, they talk about the effects on the states. They don't go into detail. They're not going to give you realistic samples. Again, the previous frame shows they'll take a sample at a nuclear power plant, but it goes up the chain of command. It ne never goes straight to the public. It never, I repeat, never goes directly to the public unless it leaks out. In that instance, I have a screen capture where they're very concerned, NRC officials, about a bleak plume map that has been posted up online by the sovereign independents. Let me continue with the frame. NRC understands that DOE is taking this role. However, a point of contact has not yet been identified. The Nuclear Energy Institute has volunteered to provide the NRC with environmental sampling data from U.S. nuclear power plants. The NRC is sharing this information with the EPA who is a central point of contact for this information. The public U.S. radiation monitoring data, RADNET, is posted on EPA's public website. Okay, let's have a look at the next frame, because this is the one I'm speaking of, which is from Alexander Higgins' blog, who out of all the people that published me online, I rate him by far the best out of them all. Uh, it's just too bad that his blog is down, because I rate him higher than InfoWars, I rate him higher than Natural News, I rate him higher than the Intel Hub, and many, 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 many others, okay, many others because he confronted difficult issues. So here's a screen capture. Unfortunately, Hurricane Sandy, which we know was a modified and intensified storm, affected his home, flooded his home, his computer screwed up. But I screen captured some of the important uh, headlines from his blog. And here's one confirmed. EPA rigged RADNET, Japan nuclear radiation monitoring equipment, to report lower levels of Fukushima fallout. I don't just really shouldn't have to say anymore. You trust your government? Well, you can listen to their report, which is they did everything right and everything's fine, but we're going to talk about fatality index study in just a moment. We'll talk about the Chernobyl-Fukushima bird study, fatality study, in a moment. And I think you'll find that the methodology and the results are congruent, absolutely congruent. And for me, as far as I'm concerned, I'm asking myself, where's the Department of Justice? Do we even have a Department of Justice, or was it just to protect the government to protect industry from being held accountable? Question. Next frame. NARAC calculations. I'll read the entire, it's not much here. NARAC, and again, these do dose assessments and modeling and that kind of business, completed performing a dose assessment for Tokyo using the quote-unquote super core source term. Plume estimates are considered extreme worst-case scenarios. Here again, I must interrupt to say proof positive. They are modeling worst-case scenarios. We'll never get them. Oh, the general public will never get them. They would rather your children you be pushing your baby carriage out when this plume hit in California. I, I'm going to kid you not. This one is what I've had to deal with for many, 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 many months, and no one really wants to address it to the degree that I'm addressing it with these screen captures and explaining it to you so you understand clearly and in a concise manner exactly what happened, okay, because a crime against humanity was committed. We now know the inside information in these documents that they knew everything. It was a giant cover-up. No one, not a single person has been held accountable. No one that I'm aware of, kind of like the Pentagon child porn downloaders, thousands of them in the defense and Pentagon, 
only a handful has ever been held accountable. In this case, even worse, thousands and thousands have died. Nobody's held accountable. The nuclear industry is by far the most diabolical and powerful one of them all, and that's what my research has led me to believe. So we know that the White House is involved. The White House is looking at modeling and plume estimates. Worst-case scenarios were certainly looked at. We could have been warned based on worst case and said, hey, just to be on the safe side, stay out of the rain. Uh, we'll look at a screen capture in here where other countries got rainwater warnings, but we did not. Results to be discussed at 321, that's March the 21st, White House meeting. Okay, again, all these results to be discussed in the White House. Obama leading up to election. Alex Jones will get a little bit onto nuclear power, but he won't show you these FOIA documents. When Arnie Gunderson killed, uh, one of the, he was the most improved show of the year this year. He goes in there and he talks about radio, uh, nuclear power, but to him it's like we'll learn from mistakes and everything is going to be all right in the end. He's not against nuclear power and that we should systematically begin to shut as soon as possible. We need to take these uh, systems down and cool down, dry cast storage, and get out of it. Again, I showed you thousands of patents are being suppressed. Why are we using nuclear power? Why is Gunderson telling us that nuclear power is going to save us from climate change when the planes are spraying in the air every day? I ask myself, who does he really work for? Again, I'm going to give you the real hardcore deal, the hard, brutal truth. If you don't like it, you can certainly go to Amy Goodman and Arnie Gunderson and listen to those two talk about their kind of false reality, if you ask me. It's not really based in real reality at all. It's a pretend. It's a game of pretend. NARAC, in the process of performing a trans-Pacific dose assessment for the United States, using the worst case, MELCOR, source term provided by the NRC. NARAC is also planning to revisit the quote-unquote supercore trans-Pacific, that means across the Pacific. We now know there's that one jet stream that the commercial airplanes catch on their way back from the Orient. It saves them fuel and gas because the wind's already blowing from Japan right over here to the States. If you don't believe me, look it up. Google it. Okay, so they they know darn well about the Trans-Pacific Assessment, and they're looking at worst-case plume modeling, point of that uh, frame. Next frame, Current Protective Measures Team Actions. This frame, I just want to show you again, there should be in here references to the White House, continuing to work with DOE, NIT, and NARAC to refine estimates of radiological effects on the United States. Again, they're darn well looking into the effects. We're not going to hear about it, but they're going to check into it. They are going to look into it. Updating on-site and near-site radiological and meteorological conditions that the information is received. And need to follow up with a liaison team to contact the EPA to follow up on their monitoring efforts along the western U.S. coastline. I guess this one more shows that they were talking about western coastline, radiological effects on the United States. Again, clearly in these documents, they're looking at the U.S. They know we're going to get hit. It's a three-core meltdown that happened right away. Within that first week, they had all melted down. Now we're looking at possible China syndrome. Okay, I just heard this on RT the other day. I got to give them credit there. It was an ex and someone sent me a link. Thank you very much. And on RT, the guy says, "Look, there's steam coming cracks out of the ground now. We could have a corium melted with just a blob of this heated, superheated material, literally burning its way through the earth until it reaches the the water level, and then we have steam coming out cracks." And wow, folks, we still have emanations of radiation coming from Fukushima. It is ongoing. Is there any move stopped by the American government? No. Because if they take any move in the direction of the inclination that it might be serious, well, how does that affect nuclear power? See how diabolical they are? 5,000 suppressed patents. Hey, you can't have a solar panel that's 80% efficient. Sorry. And don't, don't think that Adina Shah is going to give it to his people in Iran. Right? He wants them all addicted to oil, and he's suppressing technology as well. Keep that in mind. Next frame. U.S. ambassador in Japan requested a forward-looking pessimistic scenario calculation. Request was forwarded to White House to gain alignment prior to moving forward. Okay, pretty critical here. Ambassador to Japan says, hey, he wants a pessimistic, pessimistic scenario calculation. He's no fool. You're not going to bamboozle him. NARAC has not undertaken the analysis. The Protective Measures team has informed, was informed that NARAC is waiting on a task from the White House before proceeding. What does this frame show you? House in control. If Obama didn't know, what, what's he doing? Is he locked in the closet playing PS3 uh, 18 hours a day, then he goes to bed and he just don't do anything? Where's the guy? Does he live down in some cave, cavern somewhere deep underground? He's totally disconnected from the above ground he's there? Does he not know it? The White House got this level of control, but Obama doesn't know? Wow. We got bamboozled, and I don't trust the D-Bold voting machines, but the first heard, yeah, they voted Obama in. They sure did. Next frame. 
protective measures team. And not to pick on Obama, because Romney said the same clean, emission-free lie up there during the debates, too. Right? That's just a lie. He's not that stupid. He can't be. He cannot be that ignorant. It takes me just a, a month of research to know just how deadly nuclear power is. But if you don't look at it, you'll never know. You just assume like they tell you it's clean, emission-free energy, right? Protective measures team, Japan reached back to PMT headquarters to raise awareness of the, quote, waste container and, quote, radioactive mox sludge causing access problems, issues on site, no action at this time. They don't want to talk about mixed oxide fuel, uranium and plutonium mixed together in nano form, I'm told. And when it, when this stuff goes up in a criticality, it's very fine particles. It is carried aloft. It's very dangerous and latent cancers. From my studies have told me that plutonium, the deadliest substance known to man, it's five to ten years later, five to ten years later, have yet to begin to see the cancers from Fukushima in the United States. Oh, but it's coming. It's coming. I know you don't want to believe it. And unfortunately, radiation is invisible. Because if it was a dark purple color, we'd have all handled this a long time ago when you saw it seeping out of darn near every nuclear plant. If it's not tritium, it's a pop um, uncoupled, and it's leaking radioactive gas in the environment. I don't make this up. These are actual cases, right? Next frame, PMT comparison of Fukushima Daiichi to Three Mile Island and Chernobyl Atoms. Again, clearly in the documents, you see multiple references. We know everything about Chernobyl. We have the benefit of knowing everything about Chernobyl. That, I believe, is an exact quote, word for word, from the documents. Okay, they've managed to distract me from this, but I'm back. I'm back, and this is Plumegate, folks, and the nuclear industry is begin to systematically shut down all nuclear plants. These people in control must relax their grip and give us alternative energies. They're not going to have the level of control. They're not going to make so much money anymore. But it, it's literally going to, it's a lifesaver for the human race. And that's not an exaggeration. It's really not. If you look at the screen capture, you can begin to look at some of the numbers and how they're comparing them. And again, believe me, they're fudging the numbers a lot. They fudge, that's what they do. How do you think we've got such a national debt? Okay, that's, it, that's it. Cooking the books is what they're good at. This is one of their highest skills, okay? Okay, let's go to the next screen capture. Another email from Roz Sarah to Harrington Holly. Subject, questions on impact on U.S. West Coast from Japanese reactor accident. Hey, a number of congressmen, Blue and that, Blumenauer, Boxer, were writing and asking point, quest, point in questions to uh, Commissioner Jacksco in regards to, they say, hey, if the, if the pollution from China has been causing us a problem in California, but you're telling us we have nothing to worry about from Fukushima. Hey, this doesn't add up. My constituents are asking questions, and I'm running out of answers. Did they get answers? No. And, in fact, one of them points out Jasko may have broken the law a number of times in the way he responded to the incident. Okay, FYI, link to email chain, but confirmation from FEMA and EPA on where they are referring questions, plume slash effects in U.S. to EPA domestic plant to NRC. Control of information, folks, is what this is all about. If you thought FEMA was here to help you, you better think again. If you thought the Department of Homeland Security is going to make you any more secure, you better think again. And you better dig into these documents and learn for yourself. Don't take it from me. Don't take it from me. Go look for yourself. All this is publicly available information. But if you don't go look, that's not what everyone else is talking about. That's not in the mainstream, an alternative. They get onto radiation and radioactive kelp and blah, blah, blah. But they're not going into this kind of detail. Keep that in mind. Yes, that is correct for NRC and domestic power plants. EPA has lead coordinating role for impacts to environment slash U.S. citizens and U.S. land areas. Again, clearly they're discussing, they're thinking about, they're talking about, they're modeling for effects in the U.S. Do we get any information on it? No. Do I need to play you what Obama said again? Yes, let's do that. What, let's, let's hear what Obama said about this again, shall we? He's an expert, isn't he? You should be very clear. That means we expect them. That means we'll hit all those locations. All those will get hit. Right. Who? What experts? Who experts? Are going to do their best to cover up the real-time results. Yeah. We're going to take KI, but and I'm going to go to South America for a week with my family, but don't you guys worry. Because I believe that you must know well, then, folks, this man cannot know very much is all I'm saying. Because in just a few months of study and investigation, I seem to have uh, accumulated a wealth of information, which Obama has been unable to do so, even considering 
the fact he's going to be presiding over the largest nuclear-powered nation on the globe. Uh, uh, it's just unbelievable. It's, and for me, it's unbelievable. Congressmen, a lot of them, they're really ignorant. They, some of them really just don't know about nuclear power. They've been told the lie. They haven't investigated. They just, someone gave them the information. They said, hey, I'm just going to trust you. I'll never go double-check it. They're not very Socratic. They just, they just take it face value, and they go through life that way. Okay, the next three or four uh, screen captures, frames here, are of some plume modeling. Now, this is from Melbourne. This is from the RSMC out of Melbourne, Australia. So these are found in the Freedom of Information documents from the NRC pertaining to Fukushima. And clearly you can see they are looking at plume mass plume models. It's not just NARAC. It's not just Vitra. It's not just Sandia. There's multiple labs, multiple companies that are doing this. And in, in other countries, in Australia, there's the NILU that I believe was the Norwegian company. And what happened was when these, these began to, some of them began to leak out. And NILU is a great example. Let me speak to them for just a minute because I, I was turned on to them by Dutch Sense off of YouTube. When he began to post these models from the Norwegian company, a lot of people began to say, hey, wow, here's a, a color model where you can see the levels that they're predicting this plume and, and by the air currents and everything. They're showing us what we're going to be hit with. They really are. Well, it's very interesting because when I started to post some of their information, and then their site all of a sudden stopped doing it. And we posted up a thing that said we're not going to do any more modeling of this anymore, and we're going to go back to sulfuric acid, SO4, and carbon and other substances that factories emit, and we're not going to look at radiation. Interestingly enough, when it started to circulate, that got cut right off. And they, trust me, like I say, we just read about the energy suppression technology. They have many ways of dissuading you and giving you an offer you cannot refuse. So just click through these three or four uh, frames here, and you can see this plume model as it spreads out over the Pacific. This is the logical path of travel because, as I've said, there is the Pacific jet stream that runs from uh, Japan and the Orient to us, to the West Coast, and it just carried aloft in this. And we knew this was going to happen. They have all the benefit of Three Mile. Remember, there's out-of-court settlements for Down Syndrome Baby and all sort of stuff with Three Mile Island, although DOE says, nope, nothing to worry about. It's the same old story. Now, this has happened three times because the Russians covered it up as well. It was neighboring states that called Russians and said, hey, our nuclear plants are picking up a bunch of nuclear stuff. Are you sure you haven't had a meltdown? You know, that's how this industry is. Transparency? Get out of here! Like a brick wall, like seen through a brick wall. Okay, here's another from the same RSMC Melbourne. This is the next frame, and this is a trajectory plot. And again, again, I just want to show you that they're all looking at all this stuff. They know all about this. They know all about what I've had to take months and months to study and learn. And the next few frame captures are from NILU and some other places and, and some leaked data from TEPCO and what have you that show the um, path of travel of some of these radionucleides that we got hit with. I'll skip through those. Then uh, number 23 RAD report from Japan. This is, was a leaked one, I'm told, and it shows that Melbourne, Florida got some high doses, Sacramento high doses. If you look down, a number of, around the world, Hawaii and other places are listed too, but clearly we got hit. The next frame is the one I told you about that is the uh, rainwater warning for other countries, for France, for the UK, for Japan, and other countries were actually given rainwater warnings. Were Americans given rainwater warnings? No. No, we were not. Even in the Chernobyl incident, Oregon was kind enough to give rainwater warnings and say, hey, Chernobyl melted down. We're detecting stuff. Trace amounts. Don't drink your rainwater. Better safe than sorry, right? What great guys they were back then, don't you think? Things have changed, though, since then, haven't they? Okay, the next frame is a screen capture from the Mangano-Sherman study, which is a fatality index study where they go in and look at the 14 weeks prior to Fukushima and see the uh, death, death by per capita. And then they go in and look at the 14 weeks afterwards, and they say, hey, all of a sudden, boom, the percentage rate of people dying is going up. And especially in infants, if you go that far into the studies and look, they're hit much harder. So, And this, again, I say it's concurrent with the Chernobyl Fukushima bird study, which I have a link to on this broadcast. I advise you to watch 30 minute video where this old scientist guy tells you all about how he studies birds. And the same thing happened in Chernobyl and Fukushima where the baby birds died off because the worms eat the leaves, the birds eat the worms, and the baby birds die. Because, and because their cells are dividing at a higher rate too, just like uh, human infants as well. So they're particularly susceptible, particularly vulnerable to radiation, the little guys, right? Such a wonderful industry, isn't it? And again, I say thousands of patents being suppressed. 
suppressed from my own experience. My father is a multiple patent holder. The Bush and Obama administration used him for a, or one of them did, I forget whether it was Bush or Obama, they called him and some other scientists in an alternative energy. My dad has a, what I like to call a super battery. They call all these guys and they have a press conference that, yeah, we're looking into alternative energy. Here's our scientists. Here's our program. And that's it. That's the last they ever hear from them. Right? Nothing. The proposal's denied. No money comes down to begin the research. Nothing happens. And they don't call a press conference and say, oh, by the way, we changed our mind. We're not going to look into that. It's pure PR all the way down the line, all the way down the line. And you know what? I resent my government for not looking into my father's design and invention of a super battery. You know what? Guess what? Nissan seemed to be really interested in it. And you're lucky he didn't just sell it out to them. You really are. Because he is a patriotic American. I'd rather no one have it than... You know, why aren't we using it, though? That's what I want to know. Okay, this next frame, we're looking at post-Fukushima excess deaths in U.S. updated for October 8. Again, this is outdated because this is back in October of 2011. But at that point, the fatality index study, and this was done by Bobby One, a big up and hats off to Bobby One, who does a very detailed index study. Uh, absolutely amazing. Excellent work from this guy. He's totally on the up and up. And here you can see broken into regions, the significant increases in mortality. And that's what we're looking at when we say, hey, prior to Fukushima, people were dying at this rate. Whoa, then after Fukushima, oh, and the plume hit, now they're dying off at a faster rate. What's going on here? What could this be, I wonder? And don't forget now the Fukushima fingerprint. And one thing Fairwinds does admit to, if you go to Gunderson's site, Fairwinds, they show them there that the radionuclides that we were hit with could only have come from Fukushima. So it's not, they tried to say it was Chernobyl, they tried to say it was Cold War era bomb testing when the trolls and the shills and the nuclear apologists, when that ran out and that played out, okay, then that finally have to come to their senses. Hopefully they come to their senses and say, look, this is a real-time effect. We're actually experiencing fatalities from this. In the next frame, cumulative death, okay, and we projected forward into the year 2031, and we're looking at 1 million. 311,840 deaths related to Fukushima. It doesn't mean you get cancer, but you could die from pneumonia because your body is, you know, under stress from, the, from your being irradiated, right? And small doses are very dangerous. Don't fall for that BS. They got that all over the net. So if you get an a, a, a x-ray when you go into your dentist, don't you? Hey, that's right, but I don't even want to get that, to be quite honest with you. I don't want any radiation but natural radiation that comes from cosmic space, not Cold War bomb air testing, none of that. Okay, and that concludes 35 minutes of the Plumegate, Return to Plumegate presentation.